Welcome back to Titanium Hangar. This is Mike, and I'll come at you with another video. And this time I'm talking to you about some dioramas that I'm making. Now, the Java Cell Barge has brought me into an old, whole new world of wanting to set up figures for the Cell Barge, wanting to set up scenes for the Java Palace, and wanting to set up scenes for some other things that are going on. And that made me think, what other scenes do I want? So, uh, here I am coming at you with another video. And this time I'm going to talk to you about two scenes I've set up in one area. The This is the purse of the droids, which I love. I'm going to talk about this uh, Sandcrawler and future Sandcrawlers. Also, I'm going to talk about what I've got going on here with the whole um, cantina scene. How you make your own cantina scene. What backgrounds you use, what figures you use. And we'll get into all that, but... uh. Yeah, Tidarium Hangar. Here we are. So first thing I want to talk about, look at all these figures and all the stuff going on. I'll talk about my music. So I got a copyright strike from using Star Wars music. So you'll hear transform music in the background because Hasbro won't copyright strike me and uh, Rhino, whatever, and the other distributors of that will not copyright strike me for using Chevron music so hey comment how much you like uh star wars copyright striking me anyway i don't even make money off this stuff i do this for fun it's a hobby <laughs> copyright strike zero dollars yo anyway moving on i really like the cantina scene now i've done a lot of stuff with this so I've gotten the Cantina aliens, and I op I had probably about half of these myself. But when I do a scene, I want to have as many vintage figures as possible. But if you look at the Cantina, there's only five or six figures that are vintage. You've got Han. Hey, Han. Did you shoot first? You've got Greedo. And you've got Chewbacca. And of course, you got these two wonderful chaps right here. You got Obi Wan, and you got Luke, and then you've got Walrus Man. Now, now I got Doctor Evazan. There's two different versions of Doctor Evazan. There's the '90s version that really, well, kind of sucks, and it was in a three pack. Then you got the other one here that has more articulation, more paint. So, kind of what I do to fill this out. Some of these figures, like this uh, praying mantis looking guy, is like thirty bucks. Some of these figures cost a lot of money. And so to get 100% in here, you're looking like a grand if you go on eBay and buy every figure. So I kind of duplicate the Wolfman, or triplicate the Wolfman, to fill in some gaps. And I, I you know, I've got most of these figures for like three or five bucks. And um, half these figures I opened up. But if there's vintage, you know, that's what I want to go for. So anyway, looking at the cantina scene, the actual scene itself... Cost six bucks back in the 90s. Now it's like 20 bucks to buy the Hasbro release version that has a stormtrooper of some sort in it, but there's no stormtrooper in the cantina until it's too late. So uh, the most I paid was for this uh, bartender war, like 15 bucks. But you know what? I was like, I can't not have the bartender in this scene, so let's do it. I did uh, get this guy like three dollars. Actually, I opened him up. I opened up most half these figures were brand new and opened up just to make this scene. Then I've got uh, the move top, move talk, and cave. And I've got two caves in the scene. There's another one over here. Now this one came with this alien over here and uh, the silver alien, which is the exact same thing as the white alien, but not but silver, but white, but silver. So it's kind of weird. Now, that guy, and then my son actually said, my son said, that guy's from episode one. Well, I don't think so. But we'll see if his test is right. Throwing in any generic pilots anywhere, they'll work. Now, this guy here was part of the cantina. And you know what? Uh, now that I'm filming this, I realize I don't have Snaggletooth, which is such a important part of this scene. But anyway, there's my cantina scene. Now, if you make a diorama... There's two things you need to know. First off, you need to do a good job starting off. But it's going to be a living 
organism as long as you have it displayed. You're going to look at it every day and you're going to say, wait, 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 I can make this better. And find other figures and other pieces to make it better. You know, and in fact, there was like a line back in the mid thousands that had real stools and all this stuff. Well, I'm not dropping a grand on this thing. I mean, I personally am not dropping a grand. If you want to start from scratch, you can drop a grand, but I might have put like a hundred bucks in this. So moving over to my next scene. And okay, so this poster behind it, I thought was a full size poster. And I guess I didn't read the fine print, and it was really, 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 really small. I put it in there anyway. Whatever. Screw it. I could just leave the wood background and call it a day. But So these figures are from... I've done a video on these guys, and they're really expensive. Uh, most of them are pack-ins with, a, like, 2005 or 2007 Jawa. And I thought, well, I've got... By like 40 Power of the Force Jawas. I've got probably 25 vintage Jawas. And, well, you know, you pick which leather cable looks real to you. But in the end, this whole scene here is what I wanted. Now, I'm trying to figure out if the Disney Sandcrawler will fit on this. I think it will. And I only like the Disney Sandcrawler for four reasons. Number one, it's bigger. Number two, it has electronics. Number three, the elevator shoots down and up. And number four, it makes sounds and lights. So, you know, if it fits here, I'd put it here. And put this back in its, you know, this vintage one back where it goes. Because, you know, vintage should be where vintage goes. So if I have a chance to put a vintage figure in, like a Jawa, or a Jawa, or a C-3PO, or an R2. And yes, I realize... I didn't want to take 20 minutes to dig out a G1 on uh, R5-D4, so sorry about that. But And I have another video that explains all these. So Uncle Owen is part of the three-pack from the Purchase of the Droids from the 90s. And then you, you see back there, there's that, I um, forgot his name, Quigan, whatever. But he's the traitor, the snitch, the snitches get stitches. Uh, yeah, that's that guy back there. I figured I'd throw him in because it kind of is pertinent to this whole map. And then um, this is a web droid, web droid, web, web, web droids. This, I think, you know what? I think this thing here is really just one of the Death Star droids without the cover. I really think that's what it is. Nobody said anything about this. There's no lore about it. But, you know, that's my opinion. And this, um, this figure here, and again, refer to my... Uh, purchase the droids video with all the names because it was fresh in my mind but this guy here is in Star Wars Battlefront 2 when I play Star Wars Battlefront 2 and there's like the Moss Eisley scene or whatever I see this guy and I think man I'm glad I got one that's really what made me whole uh, wanted to buy this whole scene but uh, anyway looking at all this it's fun I hope you enjoy it give me some feedback let me know what you think let me know what characters I'm missing in any of these scenes if I'm out of order, and uh, like, subscribe, Tigerium Hanger, wow.